There are two drawing aids in AutoCAD called Grid and Snap. They often work together, but you can also use them separate from each other. Let's start with a blank file. If you don't have one already, just go to the New tab and click on the AutoCAD.DWT template file. Snap is a toggle setting that is either on or off. If you press the F9 key, that will turn it off or on. You can also come down to the status bar. And if you come down to this icon right here, it looks like a little grid work of dots. That's the snap mode. If it's gray, it's turned off. If you left click on it, that will turn it on. It will be highlighted as blue and your command line will tell you. It'll say command snap on. Now what the snap feature does is that it restricts your mouse movements to specific increments on an invisible grid. Now you can set these increments to whatever value you need to. If you need to draw objects at incremental units or factors thereof, then snapping is the way to go. It helps you to draw in these increments every time without any doubt and without tedious data entry. The snap technique is not very useful when you are zoomed out too far because the farther you are zoomed, the more difficult it will be to see where you're snapping to. As of right now, I am actually snapping to different increments. If you look at my coordinates screen on the very bottom right here in this area, you can see that it's snapping to very specific coordinates. And when you snap, you're snapping to a defined grid. Now that grid sometimes can be made to line up with the grid pattern that you see on my screen right now. Pressing the F7 key will toggle the grid off or on. Now, even if it's off, it's just visibly turned off. You're still snapping to those specific coordinates. And you can come to the status bar down here and left click on this icon and that will turn the grid off or on as well. Now to change the snap settings and the grid settings, you need to get to the drafting settings dialog box. You can do that by right clicking on either one of these two snap buttons, the snap or the grid, and click on the snap settings. This will take you to the snap and grid options. Now you can turn off snap and you can turn off the grid by clicking on these boxes here and click OK and then everything will take place. If you go to the snap and grid tab here and you go to the snap option, you can set the number of units each snap location will be set apart. Right now they are set at 0.5 units on the X or on the Y. Now you can make them so that they're universal, meaning that they are identical, they're the same, the X and Y axes. Or if you uncheck that box, you can set one of them to 10 and you can set the other one to one or whatever value that you want to set them to. Typically though, you're going to want these to be the same, whatever they are. So now if we click OK, and if you see the coordinates move to tenths, now if I zoom in, you can't really so much see where I'm zooming to now for every 10 units because I'm zoomed in too far. And when I zoom out, you can see it a lot better. And you can really see the snapping when you start like the line command, for example. So I start to left click, and you can see as I move my cursor, everything is snapping in increments of 10. So if I go left or right, it's going to 10, 20, 30, etc. If I come straight up, it's going at 10. I need to zoom out a little more, 30, etc. And as I move from corner to corner, of course my exact distance is going to be relative to the number of units that I go up. So I can snap very easily to specific coordinates. That's the point of using the snap feature. Now it makes it easier to follow if your grid is set up at the exact same increments. So again, if I click on this arrow or right click on either of these icons and click on the snap settings button, I can get to it. In my grid spacing here, I can set up to be 10 units as well. And every major line will be set up at every five units. That's the way it looks. The major lines are these darker or thicker lines. So now when I draw my line command, if I snap here, you can see I'm snapping along the grid lines. So that's key. So if you want to graph something like you would with regular graph paper and a pen or a pencil, you can do that. Set your snap settings to a specific grid size and set your grid to that exact same size. Now, many users find the snap and grid features to be annoying because a lot of times if you zoom out really far, 
the grid changes and it's relative to your screen size. So as you can see here, I'm snapping to tenths. You can tell by my units. As I move, it goes to 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. So I zoomed out enough to where the grids try to keep a sort of semi-relative size to your screen. So they're not true grid sizes. So keep that in mind. They're really just a visual guide. And for that reason, a lot of users find this to be rather annoying. However, many users find them to be extremely useful. And I would agree with both perspectives. The ability to control where your crosshairs go without having to think about it can be very handy, especially when you're first using AutoCAD. It's also nice if you're laying out circuitry, pipe networks, or you're just trying to sketch something very quickly. Having a grid to help you visualize the length and location of your drawing objects is also very useful. I typically work with the grid on, but the snap turned off. Learning how big something is on the screen can take some time, so having a visual aid is very useful. Now, Eventually, and it may take some time and that's okay, you will be able to understand how big something is on your screen. But again, it could take some time. Don't worry if it takes you a long time though, that's okay. In fact, some people never even get the hang of it, and that too is okay. So I suggest that you often will work with the grids on at least. It will just kind of help you to give you a, a visual idea of what direction you're going, how you're working. If something is parallel, perpendicular, vertical, horizontal, it can be a great visual aid.